World War II was a huge testing ground for tank industries all around the world. Sweden, though, stuck to its own path. Swedish designs weren't tested in real combat, but Swedish engineers were eager to learn from any successes of their foreign counterparts, and then took their time improving and perfecting designs developed elsewhere. What vehicles were they able to create thanks to all that effort? And what are the vehicles that you should pay extra attention to? Let's go through the Swedish tech tree together and answer both of those questions. Let's start slow with the Strav M31 reserve tank available to all players. At first glance, it's no special features, but there is actually this. This tank has excellent armor in the rear. Yep, not a thing you see every day. It also moves pretty fast in reverse, allowing you to capitalize on that advantage. Then we have the Strav M40L. It has a more conventional armor layout, with the sturdiest armor in the front and capable of surviving a random hit or two. The first era is also the home of the Sturmpjatz FM4344, an SPG armed with a recoilless 150mm gun. It's worth mentioning that it also has access to HE shells only, and has the ammo capacity of 10 making it a great pick for players looking for something both unusual and challenging. Rank 2 greets us with the Strav M42EH, a medium tank with decent mobility. Its main selling point is its 75mm gun with powerful shells loaded with a decent amount of explosive filler. The Sav M43 1946 tank destroyer also has no difficulty dealing with enemy armor thanks to a punchy 105mm gun and heat rounds penetrating 240mm of armor. You just have to get used to the relatively low velocity of your rounds. Then there's also an AA vehicle with a name that is somewhat difficult to pronounce, the, the Luftdb M40. It's basically a truck with some armor slapped on it. It still has hardly any armor, though. In the best case scenario, it can bounce a rifle shot, or two, maybe. But, and that's a big but, this truck comes with enough firepower to use it not only against aircraft, but also against tanks. All thanks to the 40 mm Bofus gun that can use APT rounds. You obviously won't be leading a charge on this truck, but it can do a lot of good suppressing enemies and supporting allies. At the very start of Rank 3, we get yet another interesting SPG. The Panzer von Kahnenwagen 2. <laughs> Oof. Let's call it the PVKV2, okay? It's not only very mobile and has rather weak armor, but its gun can penetrate enemy defenses at almost any range. This is a great tank for sniping. Just use the terrain to your advantage and show as little of your turret as possible. Your elevation angles are good enough to support this kind of playstyle after all. The Dilat Torn is a direct successor of the Strav M42. It comes with a noticeably more powerful gun fed by four-round magazine. What's important is that when a magazine runs out, you don't have to wait ages for your tankers to load a new one. The tank has a pretty good fire rate at all times. The first vehicle you have to take a look at in rank 4 is the U-405 armored car. It's armed with two special launchers capable of spewing rockets at a crazy fire rate of 150 per minute. Thankfully, it has the ammo capacity of only 18, or there would be no escape from this little car. Then we have the Strav 81. Yes, you're right. That's the Swedish version of the British Centurion Mark III that's already familiar to many of you. Welcome to Rank 5. Say hi to the Ikvi 91, a light amphibious tank. 
Like many other vehicles of its class, it was built for lightning-quick attacks from the unexpected direction, so you'd better not reveal yourself to enemy armor if possible. To fight its enemies, this light tank uses heat rounds. They might be tricky to use at long distances, but there is a laser rangefinder to help you with that. The Vyakov 40 SPAA vehicle has two quick-firing guns, rounds with proximity fuses, and a radar station. A perfect kit for dealing with enemy aircraft. Stay vigilant, though, as on a vehicle like this, even a single hit can be fatal. Your armor will protect you from some fragmentation, but most aircraft machine guns and cannons will make very short work of you. Then we have the Strav 103A, a Swedish MBT with a unique design. Its gun is locked in a fixed position, and you can only aim by adjusting your suspension. It's tricky, even when standing still, and almost impossible on the move. So, it's a vehicle best suited for slow, deliberate gameplay. At the same time, this tank stays in action with even a single crew member left, so it can take a lot of punishment. Nothing will push the Strav 103A out of the position it doesn't want to leave. The sixth rank gives us quite a few interesting options to choose from. The LVKV-90C SPAA is armed with a 40mm autocannon that can fire APF-STS-T and HE proximity rounds. There is also a radar station to help you land shots on airborne targets. The Strav 121 is basically the Swedish variation of the German Leopard 2A4 MBT. And it's a proper Leopard alright, with all the armor in the right places a punchy gun, and high mobility to boot. There's also an interesting CV-90105 light tank, found in the premium part of the tree. It operates pretty much like the Strif 90 c but is fitted with a new turret, including a 105mm gun. Okay, we're finally on the very top. The CV-90-120 light tank is armed with a 120mm cannon with an autoloader, capable of penetrating more than 600mm of armor with its APF-SDS rounds. This tank can take on literally anyone. This last vehicle we're going to discuss today is the Strav 122, a modified variation of the German Leopard 2A5, fitted with additional composite armor. The upgrade took care of most of the old weak points, making this vehicle an even more dangerous opponent than ever before. What Swedish tanks are you interested in the most? Come on, please tell us in the comments below.